a thumbs up that we are good to go. But while we're waiting, introduce my co-stars here today. First, we should introduce Biscuit, not the not not the man, but the dog. Tell us about Biscuit, Lawrence. Biscuit has been with me for six years, and he has on Instagram find Biscuit more followers than I do on my Instagram. <laughs> Biscuit with a K, because people mispronounce all of that Biscuit stuff in French and Europe. Find Biscuit. Oh, I love that. And before we went on, my daughter is in love with Biscuit. She met Biscuit back in Thailand. I was so fortunate to be part of the AFC convention in Thailand back in October. Lawrence invited me to be a part of that a, a long time ago and um, was really excited to be able to bring Lily with me to experience that culture, not you know, the country, as well as the people at this fitness conference. And when she met Biscuit, it was very hard to tear her away. And she kept making TikTok videos of Biscuit. I don't know if you realize that if you're not on TikTok. Biscuit is super famous on Lily's TikTok page. Anyway, I digress. We are live. I have gotten the have gotten the thumbs up from my side that we're here. And I could not be more excited. So first introduce myself because I know we got a ton of new people. Thanks to you, Lawrence, being on our live today. Welcome to the Ace Group Fit page. Um, as a disclaimer, I'm well, I guess I'm not the disclaimer. I'm Shannon Fable, in case you don't know me or we have not met uh, before. Let me put your name up on the screen here, Lawrence. There we go. I'm not the disclaimer. Let me start with who I am. I forgot about that part. I'm Shannon, and um, I have Hi, known Shannon. Lawrence, gosh, how long have we known each other? I don't know. Uh, three, Forever? Uh, three months. Three months. We, we, we just got to know each other. Anyway, we've been uh, longtime friends in the fitness industry and have crossed paths on many projects. And I am so thankful to ACE that they sponsor this page, even though it's called the ACE Group page. We always want to make sure people know this is an agnostic place that they provide for us to gather as group fitness instructors. And on this page of over 5,000 members, we have people that are just thinking about getting certified, people that have bought their study materials and are studying people that have passed the test and are just getting into teaching or trying to get into teaching, people that have been teaching a while and people that have been teaching forever. So it truly runs the gamut. And um, the second piece I always like to make sure people understand is since this COVID-19 craziness, this global pause that we're all in has happened, we made a calculated decision on this page in particular to stop take a moment, reflect, see what's going on out there in the world to support fitness professionals and decide what lane we wanted to be in. And what I discovered, I think you are the fourth webinar that we've done. Now it's hard to believe it's been that long, right? Like I've been in my house for five weeks. Anyway, I won't talk about it. Uh, we decided five weeks ago that what we wanted to do was just support the group fitness instructor, both professionally, but also personally. What you won't find a lot of on this, and especially in these lives we do on Mondays with the guests that I bring on, uh, we're, we're not tackling actionable, practical tips of how to deliver your fitness classes right now in the moment. Now, we're going to talk today with Lawrence about how to make, possibly if you're virtually streaming or doing um, a digital strategy, how to make that better. But we always want to make sure any practical tips we're giving you are setting you up to be successful long term when we come back so we can recover strong. And then we're also just making sure that we're trying to take care of you holistically because we are all going through this, right? So that's my disclaimer. Now on to Lawrence. Um, thank you for joining me again, because we just did a Facebook Live 10 days ago on the Group X Pro page, uh, more specifically about how managers can support instructors from afar. So if you're a manager and you want to go take a look at that, please, it was chock full of amazing advice. And on the heels of that, I asked Lawrence how we could repurpose and bring a similar message to instructors. So Lawrence Biscontini does not need any introduction if you don't know him. I don't know how that's You're possible. Off. Then, well, well, no. Um, you may just be getting into the industry. That may be why you've not experienced Lawrence, but I promise you'll be a lifelong fan like I am after this. Lawrence is an award-winning fitness professional with every organization under the sun, both domestically and internationally. I think you own like three houses in very exotic places that I want to visit, Puerto Rico, Greece, and New York. Is that right? Yeah, it's amazing. Has a really cool dog. Um, what else? Super fashionable. Nothing, that's it. Super fashionable and philanthropic. He does a ton of Thank mentoring you. for fitness professionals, and I am honored to call him a colleague, but more honored to call him a friend. So thank you so much for being here. 
Yay. Thank you very much for having me here, Shannon. And it's an honor. And when you mentioned that you were in AFC, you were there more than once. And Asians are picky about their people and they loved you. And it's wonderful to collaborate with you on multiple platforms. Thank you. If Shannon Fable calls, icon in our industry, number one, you're nervous. And number two, you're honored. And number three, you don't say no. So thank oh. you. Well, thank you. Well, I'm excited because I know we've talked a lot over the years about supporting group fitness professionals in general, where I feel like in the last couple of decades, group fitness has become very niche and format specific. People either are teaching Les Mills or they're teaching Zumba or they're teaching this type of cycling. And so they tend to favor that deep education versus the overarching education. And that's not a criticism, it's just an observation, right? And we've talked about this. And there's good and bad to it, right? You go really deep into a mean. format and you get good at it. But sometimes if we don't have the opportunity or take the time to go back to the overarching concepts of teaching group fitness, um, we can get stale, we can not be as effective as we possibly want to be. And, and I know when we've chatted in the past, over Prosecco. It's always wine or champagne with us and food. Oh my gosh, I've got to send you this picture that I found the other day from when we were in Las Vegas together. And I don't know why we were in Las I'd Vegas. Switch. Together. The restaurant you took me to. Was that what it was? In the Wynn Hotel. Yes. And then we went to see Love, um, the Cirque du Soleil show. Oh, anyway, Lawrence and I are a hot mess. We're like total rabbits. We follow squirrels everywhere. Let me get back to what I was saying. I, hear um, you. <laughs> I know in some of these conversations, you know, what we talked about is part of the issue with, with getting back up here. Sometimes we just don't have the time to pause and take time to readdress these global conversations. So like I've been saying the last four weeks, I'm really trying to embrace the good of the pause. And the conversation we're going to have today is going to be one of the highlights of your pause. You finally have the time to not worry about your choreography, not worry about your class planning, not worry about showing up and subbing out your classes and being there and cleaning things. You can truly focus on the art of queuing. And um, Lawrence has so much information to give about how to elevate your queuing. We're going to talk about visual, auditory, and kinesthetic today, right? Sure. Yeah. And Absolutely. man, after my own heart, I actually, sociology major and a minor in communication studies with an emphasis in neurolinguistic programming. So I know it comes from that. It's one of my favorite subjects to talk about. So let's dive in. You want to tackle them in, in that order or give us your intro and then we'll sure. go in, in that order. Okay, go. That's Cheers, great. Joe, if now. you notice on your intro, three things I said in order were, I, I, I see what you're saying. And then I said, I hear you. And then I said, I feel you. How we relate to people, and yes, you've prefaced this as teaching wonderful ideas. We could take this pause and work on our communication skills. And as you with a master's in communication or education, I can say if we can't work on our just significant others in our retreat or quarantine, let's replace some older habits with some new habits. So when we go back into the world, we're better communicators. We mm -hmm. either say when we understand something, Yep, I see what you mean. Or, yep, I hear what you mean. I hear you. Or, yes, I feel you. You feel me. I feel you. And that is the crux of how we learn, how we understand, how we relate to others. And therefore, as personal trainers or group fitness instructors or managers of all of those people, how we cue and communicate mm -hmm. with each other. Are we primarily visual? Are we auditory? Or are we kinesthetic? And since there are three ways to learn and three ways to communicate, the more well-rounded we are will increase our chances, especially when we don't know the people on the other side mm -hmm. of our screen now, to be more heard and more felt and more understood and more seen by more people. I want to increase my chances to connect with your heart and eyes and ears and not just be one-dimensional or two-dimensional. I want to be a three-dimensional, untouchable communicator or cure. Right. And it's so important because, you know, you said we all have our way that we communicate and want communication. And sometimes when we don't take the time to think about it, we don't know in group fitness how other people are receiving the information. And we tend to cue in our favorite style of communication, fair, right. right? So right now, such an amazing time to take all these tips that Lawrence is gonna give you and put them into practice because you're not teaching live or as many classes probably right now as you were five weeks ago. So super excited. Get your pins ready. You can always come back and watch this again. Drop questions over in the comments because I can see them and I will or, and, and I can ask Lawrence those. So let's start with visual. Tell us all about visual. 
I can't tell all about visual, but I'll give you some <laughs> practical tips if okay. that's okay. Just little pieces. The first, the, the first is whenever our hands are able, let's try to complement what's coming out of our mouth. If our discipline allows, I should by caveat say, if you've signed a contract sure. to a specific sort of pre-formatted or pre-choreographed, I'm not allowed to leave my stage, I'm not allowed to speak, or I'm not allowed to do something else, then this is, mm -hmm. I don't know, to quote a very wise woman, spaghetti to the wall, see what sticks. <laughs> but if you're allowed to be in charge of what comes out of your mouth, what comes out of your hands and what goes into their heart, let's think a little bit about visual. I always ask myself, and I learn from myself by, watching, recording yourself, and now it's more ubiquitous than ever mm -hmm. to see yourself mm -hmm. and other examples of what's online, could my hands possibly be more significantly and appropriately be conveying what's coming out of my mouth? So I could say four more shoulders back and down, that's awesome. Or I could say four more shoulders back and down, that's awesome. And I've just given you an incredible amount of visual complementary cues. Four more numerical, shoulders anatomical, back and down, two more back and down, two more directional. That's awesome, motivational, and of our 10 types of ACE, group fitness, personal training cues possible, that's already five that just came out of my hands because they complemented my mouth, as opposed to doing nothing and walking mm -hmm. around or just doing this. I'm Italian, so I want your shoulders to go back and down because it's really important. What does that mean? If you right. were just watching and you didn't understand me, vamos a hacer los hombros hacia atrás, cuatro más, and you don't speak Spanish, you're like, well, he's really excited about whipping some meringues or egg whites for some protein because it doesn't mean anything. Right. Unless I'm complimenting what's coming out of my mouth. Absolutely. So a couple things I want to dig into. Do those visual cues again? The four more. Exactly the same? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Four more on the left side with your shoulder back and down. That's awesome. So I hope you guys noticed what he did because he's not just, and he might not even know that he's doing it. He's not just giving you the illustration of what he's saying, but he's also doing it larger than life, like a cheerleader. So there's a big difference in going four more shoulders back and down where it's very staccato and big so that you can be seen then four more shoulders back and down. So I don't know if you guys picked up on that, but Lawrence is always super animated when he talks. It's the same way that he teaches, but when you're on a stage Shine. and there's this, in a good way, and um, character. So when you're on a stage and you have this chasm between you, chasm between you, however you wanna say it, uh, you have to be larger than life. And you've gotta make sure that the visual hits at the exact same time that you're doing with your body. And if you also notice, <laughs> love that, his facial expressions made you pay attention to the visual as well. So it was almost like an exclamation point to what he was doing here. The other thing, and I know, I, I know you preach about this all the time, the art of mirroring. What I've loved witnessing lately is people having to relearn a skill that has been lost in the last 15 years. When you are teaching online to people, you are facing them. So everyone has had to rewire their brain and remember how to cue in this way. And can you talk a little bit about that? Because if I'm doing this, and, and granted, there are some things that you have to face the mirror and do. If they're complicated dance, complicated, um, choreography but in a strength training class in a circuit class in a cycling class there is zero reason anyone should ever have to look at your ass so I'm i want so you glad to we have two okay. hours for that we have two hours together. for this go talk about mirroring talk about mirroring now depending on the device from which you're streaming it's important to know that some of our options out there give us the option to flip or to mirror so when mm -hmm. people are receiving maybe your left becomes their left. Or as I'm demonstrating on uh, the programs uh, we're using today from me to you through Shannon and World Wide Web, I'm thinking as you're looking, this looks like your left, it's my right. You don't even have to go there if you pick landmarks. I like to show if yes. it's in my living room, if I'm out at my pool, here's the wall, here's the pool. Wall arm, here's pool leg. 
If I say that we're going to move towards our pool, we're going to move towards our leg. And then you've already made the dyslexics feel acceptable. You've taught, drawn into active agers being able to understand mm -hmm. movement towards recognizable landmarks as opposed to getting ready or getting rid of right and left. But know that if you don't do that or don't set yourself up for right or left, you're going to be cueing to the opposite of what you're seeing. And that's going to take away or undermine your own self-confidence. Right, right. And I, I noticed that, this and oh, uh -huh. I just want to capture this because so many people are starting to talk about, but hey, wait, when I'm doing digital, like we're self reverses it. And now I'm totally confused right or left. You just solved the problem. And I had written it down to make sure we didn't forget about it. Stop saying left and right. Q landmarks. And I think what you just said right there at the end is so important. You have to orient them to the landmarks at the beginning of your class. And then who cares? I, I know we have this innate need to start on the right leg and make sure everything is balanced. Life is not balanced. Like, forget about it. Um, but just start on whatever leg feels right. And, and and I love that. So thank goodness, because I've seen so many people confused because they do mirror or they don't mirror. And now they're facing the camera and now they don't know right from left. Just forget talking about right and left and you'll be totally fine. I don't know my right from my left at all anymore. Do you? Group fitness instructors don't and presenters don't. And the second <laughs> tip for when you're facing a camera is sometimes the best place to face with your people and cue a side or a landmark is to cue no landmark and turn to a side. Mm. Here's why. Sagittal plane involves flexion and extension front to back. Transverse plane involves twisting or separating our upper and lower body with an exception of pushing our chest. You can mm -hmm. replay this if this is not a review for you. And, and frontal plane is any movement you could do in a toaster and not get burned if you're a bagel. So you could do <laughs> lateral flexion, you could do shoulder ab, take away, AB deduction, AD deduction, adding back to your midline, hip abduction, adduction, and ankle inversion and mm -hmm. inversion. When you're doing frontal plane, toaster-like movements, face your people. And when you're doing sagittal or transverse, turn to the side, forget sides, and show people that they can move anything they want. And then the next time, mm -hmm. do your other side, but yeah. let them have access to what it looks like from our side. I love that. And some other people are commenting about, and I know you and I have learned this teaching in other countries people where people- here. People are watching? Tons of people, this is very exciting. I love that we have a captive audience now that no one's teaching at lunchtime anymore. Um, we've taught a lot in other countries. I spent over a decade teaching in Japan and it taught me a lot, a lot about visual cueing. Because all of a sudden my, <laughs> funny jokes that some people think are funny, my humor, the things that I say, the cues that I use, they didn't mean anything. I had to wait for them to be translated. So all of a sudden, I, I really dug back down into my visual toolbox and realized that it was far easier for me to use my hand signals and mirror and make eye contact with people to draw them in and connect with me so that whether they heard me or not, they felt like they understood me. And and I think you would agree that's huge right now that we're trying to bridge the distance. And I learned that too, and you probably, you filmed so many more videos than I ever have, but I learned that a long time ago, like trying to connect through a camera takes so much visual emphasis, not just your gestures to tell them what you're doing, but you know, that nonverbal, um, the nonverbal that they see from you. So I know that's a totally different subject, but keep going. So much good stuff. Maybe we should just do like each one of these on a Monday visual today. Uh, no, keep going. Oh, now that you plant that theme, I mean, I know you're booked for the rest of the year. Uh, therefore, we want to make sure that we watch ourselves with volume oh off my gosh. and something that's at least three minutes and make notes with the lens or you put on mm -hmm. your glasses of someone <laughs> who's never been to your class before. And you say from the novice's point of view, the mother's like point of view and an elite athlete's point of view, wanting to get in a more level three approach to movement is do I offer enough cues mm -hmm. to follow the general gist based on my hands because you can't you can't hear when you're watching with your visual glasses mm -hmm. what's coming out of my hands for all cues it's one thing to say try to breathe through your nose if you can and it's another thing to say try to breathe through your nose if you can right because mm -hmm. i'm complimenting what i'm doing and it's one thing to say that's awesome great or 
that's awesome. Great. I'm giving you hearts because I'm not on Facebook, but those of you are seeing, I'm trying to find some complimentary way with my hands to convey meaning because there will be some people who depend on every word, not just teaching to the foreign language, multicultural melting plot, like a club in New York mm -hmm. City, or the people who just are deaf. And we do have those. I'm very, very, you mentioned Jap Japan and your experience there. I'm very tied to the visual and auditory and kinesthetic learners. But in 1968, I was scheduled for surgery because I had lost hearing in my ears and I had cysts mm -hmm. that needed to be removed surgically. I was dependent on every single thing I could see, what was coming, what was food, crossing a street with my mom, how to dress, mm -hmm. where to get ready for school. You depend on everything that you see. And if we take advantage of the fact or take for granted that people are just going to listen to our words, now it's a downward facing dog. Let's get ready. And what does that mean for you if you don't speak my language or can't hear me? Ahora vamos a hacer perro hacia abajo en el mat. Okay, muy bien, prepárense. It's just like, well, he's nodding like one of those dogs <laughs> in a plastic in a car. What does it mean? We have to compliment. That's with awesome. Our our oh, my gosh. We, we could go so deep into visual because, like I said, there's there's the, the, the things that Lawrence started off with, which are the gestures or the symbols that help people follow what you're saying, especially if they don't quite understand what you're saying. And then there's this whole nonverbal piece. But the big takeaways I heard were get back to mirroring. Stop saying right and left. Lots of ways you can you can dig in there and try to use these gestures. Sorry. Again, I'm trying. Yeah. Gestures to articulate or emphasize what your mouth is saying, but now let's get to our mouths. Auditory. What you got for us? I think we want to now more than ever spread love and healing and positive environments in our world that needs healing and love and positive environments. Especially when we don't know who's on the other end, stopping a scroll to catch what we want to put out that's compelling. My first tip away, tip takeaway or tip away which happens after happy like hour, a uh, tip away <laughs> is, is to become more positive. Let's only cue in our positive realm. Just like in visual, I've never been a fan of showing a negative because your visual learners will follow you. I a lot of instructors will say, I'm seeing this and I won't even show you. They demonstrate what they don't want. Half the class follows because mm -hmm. one third of your class is going to be visual and say, I don't really want that. Oh, well then why'd you take time to show us? Right. Same with verbal with auditory cues let's only cue in the positive realm and then we're only cueing to a solution if i say to you shannon don't think about an elephant on a bosu in a pink polka dot bikini eating popcorn in the middle of a yoga class your mind only can go there because you understand in the language i'm using now english elephant bikini bosu yoga class polka dot mm -hmm. and therefore your mind has to go there before I say don't all of those things. Right. We tend to do double negatives in fitness. Don't forget to breathe. Don't grab your ball there. Don't drop your weights when you put them on the floor. If we only get into the habit for now at home with our significant others, boyfriends, girlfriends, lives, and pets with keep, keep breathing, keep a quiet sound when you put your weight on the floor, keep breathing, keep your shoulders back and down as you inhale through your nose and set yourself up for mm -hmm. success. Keep a neutral wrist as you're lifting on your tubing, keep weight that is appropriate for you. So you keep your shoulders back and down, keep your navels in, and then you're getting in the habit of a faster response from them, only cueing with love and positive mm -hmm. environment to what's going on and people connect immediately. Why would we ever, start with a don't yeah it's hard i think sometimes the path of least resistance right it's easier to shout out what you don't want than what you do want i want to go deeper into two and, and i think you talk about these two ideas in a slightly different way but um actually just one i want to talk about anchoring <laughs> verbal cues and what i mean by that is we have a lexicon in fitness that comes very easy to us Brace the core is a great example. And I hear people throwing out that cue over and over and over and over and over and over and over. And the fact is your regulars might know what it is because they've been with you so long and at some point they finally got the memo. But my mom, the first time she hears it, she's left going, what does that mean? So I call this concept of, um, of cueing anchoring your cue. So you might say, all right, it's kind of, um, let me back up. If you teach body pump, they do it perfectly for core engagement. They set up set position during the warm up. 
but they always walk you through what set position is. Feet hip distance apart, knees slightly bent, tailbone down, engage three dimensionally, chest up, shoulders back and down, chin on the horizon, or eyes, chin lifted, eyes, I can still remember, recite it from like 20 years ago, eyes on the horizon, this is set position. So throughout the rest of class, if I say set position, this is what I mean. So you have permission to shorten the language, but it can't be secret code. Does that make sense? And to your point, it's got to be stated in the positive, but we've always got to like explain it at the beginning and give them some, and I know you're going to get to kinesthetic, visual and kinesthetic way to find out what you mean, and then you can get to the shortened version of it. Do you have anything else to say about that or ideas for that? Another example is when I was teaching my mom and I'd say, engage your abs. She has been married more than a few times. And so when she hears the word engage, it's not always a positive experience for her. She's like, where's the ring? What is this involved? Where's the contract? Just like your core or brace. We have to be aware of, even for those who know, that for every few minutes, our brain will only process similar cues only so many times and they mm -hmm. become habitual cues. Let's make inspirational cues once in a while and then everyone is compelled to listen. So the people who can raise their eyebrows will be like, what, did he just say that? If it gets them there, if it gets them to cue a little bit, connect to their body a mm -hmm. little bit more, let's be aware of being positive cures. Let's being aware of making ourselves accessible like you said, define and anchor our cues. Mm -hmm. And once in a while, find words that you've never used to say mm -hmm. the same thing so that people have a balance in every experience we create between inspirational and habitual. Mm -hmm. What's a crazy way we could cue to bring your navel to your spine? We're all naked on the beach or we're in bikinis in Mykonos, my favorite beach. You don't wear a bathing suit. Here we go. I'm going to take you a picture from your side. What are you going to do? Instantly, people connect who have mm -hmm. nothing to do with fitness, perhaps, because everybody knows how to lift here and draw in against all the sangrias you've just ingested. So I think that once in a while, it's okay if it takes more time and gives more words to get sure. people to connect on a deeper level. Right. And then you can be succinct later. And and I think you bring up a great point. We do end up saying the same words over and over because they either resonate with us or that's what we were taught or we've always said it that way. You said a, a little while ago, you know, while we're at home, forced to videotape anyway, take some time and videotape yourself. And this time, just listen to the words you're saying. I'm sure you would use that as a great next step. And find the words that you say over and over that if you gave it to your mom or somebody who doesn't exercise, would they know? Like the one that I used to point out in cycling all the time, there are two, breathe, breathing. What do you mean by that? <laughs> Why now? What's the point? Give me some more because now you're just taking up air by saying something because you don't want to be quiet. And then the second in cycling, and I think this translates to a lot of classes, is explaining how people are feeling by using numbers. So we tend to talk in RPE or Borg scale or zones or percent of heart rate max. But at the end of the day, without explaining what that feels like in layman's terms, this is another great one to really practice on anchoring while you've got some time away from your habits. So, for example, in Schwinn, you know, we cue zone one, two, three, four. But if I just say, come on, Lawrence, warm up, zone one, what does one mean? Now, if you tell me one means this is your gossip zone, we're on our little cruisers with our baskets riding into town and we can have a conversation about everything that's happening with our favorite stars on People magazine covers. Now I know what you mean. And then I can anchor it throughout the class. Whenever I say come back to zone one, this is how I want you to feel. And the more robust I can make that explanation. Right. So I, I think these are two big things I would suggest that you guys uh, take some time to think about because we do become. So I love that you said use the word habitual. We become very habitual with words we use uh, as either short cuts or because it's just always the way we've explained it. So taking some time to really focus on enriching your vocabulary. And like you said, stating it in the positive would be amazing. Good stuff. I want to go back to one question I saw way up here. And I'm going to change it just a little bit because I none of us want to talk about formats. But we were asked the question, how do we feel about Zumba, which seems to only promote visual cues? Do you want me to tackle? Because I have an, a, a non-political way to explain it. 
Sure. And I, I know that Zumba B1 has evolved over years, especially mm -hmm. Zumba Gold encourages verbal. And part mm -hmm. of the B1 I took with Josie and Joy, who taught the beginning first ever Zumba Gold, we had a whole section of our afternoon about how to communicate with active older adults, right? Mm -hmm. Verbally, as well as visually, as well as kinesthetically. I don't think anyone has ever said in any program, you may not open your mouth. Right. At least in the program that you're specifically talking about, if yeah. you can get better communication to your classes and clients. Now, and what I thought was interesting, and I will be the first to admit, I want to say it's probably 15 years ago was the first time that I brought Zumba onto my schedule and I was not well versed in it. So the first time I came in to audit a girl's class that was teaching Zumba and she didn't open her mouth for 60 minutes, I was like, what the heck? And then I talked to her about it. She explained it. And you know what? I found it to be lovely because it made her a better teacher in all of her other classes. She got very good at doing the nonverbal that we talked about earlier, the visual, like you call it. And the other thing that was really interesting to me when I stepped in and I asked members why they loved it so much, because they actually would write in comment cards how much they enjoyed that the instructor in Zumba did not talk. And when I would interview them and dig deeper, because I never take a comment card at face value, I'm always like, tell me more about that. Tell me more about that because it stood in the face of everything I'd ever thought to be true about queuing. They said two reasons why I love this. One, when you're not talking to me, I can concentrate on what am I doing and I can't get it wrong. There's something really interesting with our verbal cues. This goes back to you saying state in the positive, right? Because people are used to people teaching them verbally. And when they don't get it exactly right, it makes them feel like they're wrong. So I thought that was a really interesting thing to come out of, of me interviewing some of these members. And the second thing they said is, I actually have stopped going to a lot of other classes because instructors tend to talk incessantly and I can't find my way through the garbage to the actual stuff that I need to hear. It's distracting. So again, just like Lawrence said, I don't think Zumba, the Zumba police are not going to come after you if you do talk. But I think because they emphasize the nonverbal so much, it has it's really taken some instructors teaching to the next level. And there are some lessons we can all learn from that about how to turn up the visual, turn down the auditory, or become a little more succinct or specific about how you're using your words so they have greater impact. Yes, we have two ears and one mouth so we can listen and two eyes so we can watch twice as much as we actually speak. That sums up going to what we began as a preface, mm -hmm. cueing has three dimensions and to, to the degree that we are three dimensional cures helps improve our chances that the majority of people will communicate on three levels visual auditory and kinesthetically to us it's not a judgment that they have to be 33 and a third percent equal mm -hmm. in every experience if you walk in and leave and have never opened your mouth and have never even identified your name or new people or said what day it is or welcome back from our world retreat or quarantine because a program said I'm not allowed to open my mouth, not that any program says that, then if you there are three dimensions of cueing to be a teacher, I just ask to what level are you embracing all three potential ways for you to communicate and them to learn? Absolutely. Ooh. So much I could get into here about that pie chart, about how your words are only 7% of the message when people right. hear it. NLP. We won't go there. Oh my gosh, it's so good. Okay, another subject for another week. Let's dive into kinesthetic. And I know we're keeping you longer than we normally do on ACE, but I hope, give us a few thumbs up if you're still cool with it, because I think this is really great information that we don't want to cut off yet. I'll pause and wait for that positive affirmation. Or maybe I'm I won't because sure I'm saying, enjoying Sharon, talking to you anyway. Stop. They have to go. They just <laughs> no. go for happy hour and day <laughs> drinking is now an early event. It is, right? Oh, my gosh. I made the best drink yesterday. Do you want to hear about it while we're waiting for our positive Lemonade. affirmations? Tell me. Um, well, it had lemon in it, but it was lavender gin and Prosecco with a lemon twist. Oh, you have access to stores. <laughs> mm -hmm. Come to Puerto Rico. <laughs> Okay, good. Anyway, okay, let's move on. Let's go to kinesthetic. Touch me, baby. Kinesthetic to me is means that people don't really care how much you know, but they want to they want to know how much you care and people will leave and come back to you and spread your message when they're not just touched in their body and what's gone into their eyes or ears, but what's come out of your heart that affects them. Just like the visual will say, "I see what you mean." And the auditory 
I hear you. I hear what you're saying. And the kinesthetics going to be, I feel you. Do you feel me? Do you feel me? Mm -hmm. Do you feel what I'm saying? I'm trying to get my head on what this really is supposed to feel like. People want to know that we're embracing them in some in some way. And my favorite way to go there is one of my favorite F words that I hope we can say on the American Council on Exercise webinar. And that F word is feeling. We're always <laughs> so into, as group fitness instructors, personal trainers, and queuing coaches, telling people what to do and in group fitness, when to do it and how many to do it, that we often forget where to invite them to feel. Mm -hmm. I invite you to feel it here, or I feel it here. Not with the should word, because everybody's at a different level with different expectations and body. So mm -hmm. I, I always say, we shouldn't should on people. Stop shoulding on me. You should do this. You should do this. And it also means by taking away the word should, we probably want to avoid saying, oh, you'll love this stretch as the girl bends and splits upside down on one arm with a TRX and a glow stick. Bless her heart. That's great for her. And she loves it. And it's okay. And it's huge difference to say, I love this because I feel it here, but not you'll love this because. Maybe make invitations. I invite you to feel this here. The purpose of this cardio strength, flexibility, balance, neuromuscular brain gain, whatever it be, mm -hmm. is to feel this. And then people can sort of connect to themselves. And along with the F word of inviting them where to feel, because we rarely use, ask yourself, the next time you do something for 60 minutes, if you can use that F word once, per 10 minutes. That's only six times in a class, but good for you if you can, because it's super hard. Two other words to get you into that kinesthetic cueing with words and then stories are pretend. When you can use the word pretend, pretend that you are the top of a jar and you're twisting, but you're not the bottom of the jar that's stable. Instantly, mm. kinesthetic people are all there with the metaphor and the term and outside mm -hmm. of class, and they've got jars of haagen whatever, at home, and they can relate to that, as opposed to do, 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 say, 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 count, 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 watch, watch, watch. Kinesthetic want to feel, so the more we can use feeling and pretend cues, help people draw in. There are other words as well, but I don't want to take up too much time. Yeah, no, but I love that you're talking about, because I think we all falsely assume when you talk about kinesthetic and, and I know in a lot of our group fitness certification information, we dive in really deep on kinesthetic about when can you go make hands on adjustments or when can you stand next to someone and when can you, and it's not always available, Six especially, feet. yeah, definitely not now. And it's going to be for a long time. You are not going to be able to go near these people if they want to stay comfortable. And also you're doing digital, you're streaming, you are, you are video stars now. So, I love that you're introducing us to this concept of cueing kinesthetically. So using our words. And again, I, I love saying you shouldn't should on anyone. And the tenet that we talk about at ACE is, um, let me see if I can explain it without butchering it. We've got to trust that our clients, that our participants are the experts on their bodies and what they need at every moment. I'm just a shepherd, right? And even though this class is hit, and I know that to really get what you need to out of hit, you need to get to a place where you want to kill me and you can't talk. Someone may have chosen to do my hit workout online today because it came at a convenient time. They saw me, they liked the music, they jumped in, but it's not what they need. Same thing might happen live, right? They might just stumble into, and, and I see it all the time where instructors are so flummoxed by, well, they came to this hit, but they're not working as hard as they should have. I know they can do more. I know they can be more. Your job is not to tell them that. Your job is to empower them to decide what's right. And so when we, I think that's a big part about kinesthetic is like, here's what I'm inviting you to do. And if you want this benefit, here's how long it's going to last. Here's what I want you to feel. Here are your options to get there. And then let them choose their own thing and stop putting your ego into it. They're not following my choreography. Sorry, that's a whole nother soapbox to get on. So I'll get off of it very quickly. But you introduced it's me to- It's not a soapbox. It's about making people feel it's important, right? And getting in touch with their bodies to self-select because we're very heterogeneous now. It's only kids that are homogeneous. We've all got issues in our tissues, twinges in our hinges, <laughs> and half of them can't right? hear it. So let's just work that they feel comfortable. And if they're going to push themselves, they decide to accept an invitation to accept another level. And it's, it's for them to decide who cares if they're doing it or not. They showed up and that is better than 85% of the world, 
right? And this is going to be hugely so. important when they come back because I know we're we're phase one of this. I mean, you've heard that, Lawrence, right? Phase one of American recovery is open the gyms. I'm not going to talk about it um, because I'm excited that we are, but I'm and I'm optimistic that it's all going to work out. But I also know there are a lot of people that even though somebody has magically said that we are part of phase one for whatever reasons, um, a lot of people aren't going to come back until they feel really comfortable uh, with the way that we are going to protect them. So when we do, we have an even bigger responsibility to make them feel really good about whatever choices they made. They are risking their health to show up in our classes. So stop telling them they need to jump in. If you can't do that, do this. Again, another soapbox maybe for next Monday. Um, you introduced me to a Feldenkrais quote that again, I'm going to totally butcher because over the past decade, I think I have morphed it. What do you remember it? About no not judging, just awareness. just awareness. Yes, I when have you choose I, level one or level three or just sit and think about a tree instead of balancing like a tree. You're doing something, not judging one difference between one side or another. Comparison is the thief of joy. You can't compare yourself with other people. And now we know you can't compare your right knee with your left knee. Right. And I mean, when you introduced me to that quote, I have adopted it. We used it at Balatone. Um, I'm not sure if it's still part of the Balatone lexicon, but it is a part of everything I said. And and I love someone over here said, yes, I always tell them that they walked through the door and that's huge. My plea or my next level up that I invite you to take is don't just say it, believe it and then make them feel it. Right. So we can all say at the beginning of class, deep breath in, deep breath out. I am so happy that you made it here today. That is huge. Let's get to it. But then if we don't actually believe that and our ego is tied up in whether or not they're working as hard as they can or doing what I tell them to do for fear of them saying we're not a hard teacher, or the best teacher, then we're not going to be able to put ourselves in a place to take all these great ideas that Lawrence gave us to elevate our cueing and truly make it where there are no judgments, just awareness. And you are the expert on your body and what you need. I'm just here doing my job, right? Just like when you go to the movie theater, no one's running in there going, you paid $15 to be here and you bought your popcorn, wake up. Right? It's up to you what you do with your time and and, and with your investment. Anyway, I, I um, digress. So love everything you said about kinesthetic. And, and I think you would support, you talked about visual, film yourself, turn off the volume and watch it. And think about all the things that Lawrence said in that first 15, 20 minutes about how we can be better at visual cueing. Second, we talked about let, now I want you to film it and I want you to listen to it, but not watch your beautiful self and how good you are at moving and how great you are with your visual cues and listen to the words that you're using, the words you're not using, how much you're talking, how fast you're talking, how slow you're talking. Is there any intonation? And again, that's a whole other conversation, but really listen three dimensionally to what you're saying. And then finally, I, I think a really big, huge new tip that you probably got from Lawrence is this whole idea of kinesthetics. So are you, we can't physically be next to people. So how are you inviting those kinesthetic learners to really feel what you want them to feel? And I always say, you've got to cue people for what they should be feeling, not what they should be looking like, because it's very different. And I know we've talked about this one before too, like in squats, challenge yourself this week to stop cueing squats to keep your knees behind your toes. That's what a squat may look like for most people. But what should it feel like? I want you to feel more weight in your heels than anywhere else on your foot. And then you get them down in the squat and you say, hold it and say, can you wiggle your toes? Do you feel the weight in your feet? And let them check their work and then move on. Those are all examples of kinesthetic cues too. So I think Lawrence and I could keep you here for another as you can tell, we're both very passionate about this conversation. So write in the comments like some part twos you would want us to do. We've got a lot of Facebook Lives coming over the next couple of weeks. I can't off the top of my head. I, this conversation is taking me so deep into what I want to be talking about for the rest of the day that I've forgotten what I'm doing next week. I think it's about how to learn something new. Shannon, thank you for, thank you for calling out the comments. And I should mention to anyone who's here that may know me and maybe that I know, thank you for showing up live. And please know that I don't see the comments or I'm not ignoring you consciously. Yes. Oh, no. I'm trying to feed him as best I can. And that's why you see me keep going like this. I promise I'm not like checking email over here or anything. Um, any last parting words of advice? Like, how can we use this time besides 
videotaping ourselves. Do you have any other tips of how we could use this time to really uh, elevate our visual auditory and kinesthetic cueing? I have nothing more to say. Never did Lauren say. I will, because you quoted me with Feldenkrais to you, finish by coming full circle with a quote you gave me that I have tweaked or you say butcher over the years. Mm -hmm. Our front row from the people who want our jobs to the negative Nellies will always tell us exactly what they really think. And we don't have to worry if we did four less reps on one side than the other because they've already done them and brought it to our attention in front of everyone. Mm -hmm. You got to listen to what they're saying all the time and have your ears peered. That middle of your experience or the people who are going to bring you your Christmas, Hanukkah, Kwanzaa, and New Year's Eve cookies and the gift box to, to Starbucks and they're going to give you gifts and they're going to be there and they just blend in, but they're your biggest supporters and they actually do something called a smile during your experience. Like you're not auditioning for them every single time you show up. So you got to watch them because they're always there and give them things that make them see that you see them. And then your back row, the latecomers, the body issues, the people who just want to hide and whatever's going on here, feel more comfortable not being seen and just back there. You got to have empathy for them and you got to have a heart for them. So when you teach my friends with your ears for your front row, eyes for your middle and heart for your back, instantly you are a three dimensional cure. And if you remember that mm -hmm. you are a teacher and not a fitness performer. And that ultimately is where we want to go in excellence for everyone. So you ask yourself now with all the people around you, even your pets, do you want to say don't pee here and your pet hears a don't and a pee and a hear? Or take your pet out and say good pee pee here and only emphasize what's positive about our world. Because I don't know about you, but I just want more love and positives. I don't yeah. have time for the negative. Yeah. And you know, I, I'm going to take your, I, gosh, you know how much I love this whole, I'm, my eyes are on the front row. I'm looking at the middle row. My ears are for the front because they'll tell me everything. Mm -hmm. You have to have eyes for, for the middle. The middle. And you have to have a heart for the back row. Right. And then I want you to take ears, it one step further because I also talk about, think about the people that haven't yet made the choice to step through the door into your studio or haven't stopped, right, that are just watching. And if you teach in a space where I used to teach where it's a fishbowl and people are on the ellipticals, they are checking you out. And they can't hear what you're saying. All they can do is see how you're interacting with people. So I, I always like to take it just that one step further. Like, yes, my heart and my head is with the back row and beyond is what I say. Because the front row will be there whether you were there or not. The middle row is feeling consciously competent. They're leaning into it. They'll eventually be in the front row. But your heart and your head's with the back row and beyond because that's what truly makes a difference. And that's why we were put on the earth. So, gosh, I can't thank you enough Lawrence this was so much fun as always I could talk to you all day every day thank you thank you for inviting yeah. me here thank you for the people who came in thank you for the people who are watching this after thank you for making comments and leaving a trail live or later and thank you for just joining us thank you Shannon and Ace for ha having this platform that you don't have yeah. to be certified to be accepted into this group yeah I appreciate it well more to come you guys we are here for you every Monday around I can't name all the time zones, but 12 p.m. for Mountain. Do your math. <laughs> there are apps for that, right. just in case you're wondering. Um, <laughs> yeah, and then we'll also be back. I'll be back on Friday on the Group X Pro Facebook page doing webinars for managers specifically about how to use this time to recover strong. So appreciate you guys. Stay safe, stay healthy. And if you have any questions, this is the place. We want you guys in on the conversation. So, so appreciate your time. And uh, we'll talk to you soon. Okay, bye guys.